Hi and welcome to my another video about my retouching work that I did recently and in this video I want to show you the steps I did to get the result you can see over here right now. If you are interested in the full course just check the description I have the course on high-end beauty Dutch and burn retouching it's uh, around four hours of content and I'm sure you will not be disappointed if you are not sure you can watch this video and if you feel you want to know how I retouch if you want to have a really deep view on my retouch and if you like this video just check the description after you watch this so uh, starting from the beginning that's the final result as you can see the skin looks really beautiful and it's non-destructive that's the main point of Dutch burn retouching and you can see this is after and this is previous of course this is not previous really so let's turn off the visibility on this and this is after row conversion and the real image I started with was this one and as you can see it was a bit dark so what did I do in the row conversion was to brighten up and get some more details from this area because it was a little bit too dark for me and I had to brighten this up in row conversion to make this uh, just a bit easier. The point about row conversion is uh, usually I like to knock down some of the contrast and break, bring up some of the things from the shadows because it's easier for retouching and the shadows and all of the contouring I'm doing later with dodging and burning anyway. So what you can see how I did my raw conversion in the first uh, of this step you cannot see the difference but in the second step you already can see why in first step I didn't do any difference because I want to preserve the background I really like the fact the background is quite dark and then in the copy of this I just keep the background as you can see the same on the layer mask there is no difference and brought up some of the details from this area so basically that's the thing that I did in the raw conversion I brighten up some of the shadows to make my retouching easier and right now let's go to the retouching and first of all I did cleaning up so what's the cleaning up and how I do this um, to do cleaning up I'm using basic retouching tools you can see there was some hair I wanted to remove and just a little bit of other details and also I try to sort out the things here on the eyebrow so for cleaning up I'm using basic tools like clone stamp tool healing brush tool and sometimes even how is it called spot healing brush tool uh, which actually heal the things by by default so but mostly it's healing brush tool and clone stamp and as you can see I remove all of the spots I didn't want of course there is some other parts that we not always consider as a blemishes but if it's about uh, spots pimples some of the unnecessary hair and of course also edges I clean this over here and to see this process I'm going to create new layer now I'm going to call this gray so you're going to see the full work I did this and let me fill this with the gray color or maybe I'm just going to create something here so this is the healing work I did as you can see it was quite much I'm not sure how long I was doing this but probably around 30 minutes so this is all of the healing and cloning and after healing and cloning there is always another step as you can see not really nothing complicated no frequency separation um, no other um, confusing things just empty layer and doing our non-destructive retouch on this empty layer then I went to Dutch and burn process and here all the fun is starting as you can see I have a lot of group um, so let's start from the first group that is over here and it's a local Dutch and burn and you can see 
already the huge difference. Um, I believe you can, but what's the problem? As you can see, there is a lot of uh, unwanted shadows, and we call this micro transitions that has to be sorted out uh, using local touch and burn. And I believe I did a really good job over here. As you can see, the area here, here, it was really quite rough. So that's how it looks after. You can see the mask. That was all of the areas uh, to brighten. And how does it look like? This layer is just curve layer. And I bring up some of the brightness on this layer. So the little dot is everywhere that I brighten up the image a little bit. And the other is burn. And as you can see for burning are the areas that I darken up. So it's way less usually than, than dodging, but it all look uh, similar. And the thing is, um, also I have these hue saturation layers over here. And the fact is because sometimes when we dodging or burning, we can get some color shifts. So by this layer, I try to adjust um, the level of saturation and clip this to this layer. So for example, here I knock down some of the saturation and clip this to this dash layer. Also, I sorted this out by another uh, layer where I, hue saturation layer, where I tried to knock down some of the saturation and paint in the areas where I had the shifts appearing. If you want to see how it looks exactly on the mask, I created mask over here. So let's go to the two first masks I did. And the green color, I'm going to call this, is local dutch. And the red local burn. And you can see the mask. That was that was our local dodging and burning. Of course, it's not in color. I just made this in color to make this a bit more visible for you. Um, so you can see how it actually looks like. So these two layers represent the amount of work we did in this group in local dodge and burn. So let's have a look how before and after. About local Dutch and Burn, of course, we get into global Dutch and Burn. And right now in global Dutch and Burn, as you can see, the image has much more uh, 3D perspective. And that's what global Dutch and Burn about. It's about giving to our image more 3D perspective. And it's something we always have to do. There is um, no simple way. The same what I have to say about local Dutch and Burn, if you do professional really good retouching. Um, this is something you have to do. Um, some people use frequency separation um, if you want to save some time, but you cannot replace this by frequency separation. Um, some people, you, you can mix these two. But if you want to do really perfect retouching, this is the step, the Dutch and Berry step, um, you cannot skip. If you're not going to do such a like really perfect retouching, um, there's uh, for sure global dash and burn, something you will not uh, skip for sure. And as I said, it's about 3D perspective. When I zoom this out, um, you will see this better. Mm, I have some lags. Okay. So from the distance before and after, as you can see, I just improved all of the contours, how, how the bonds goes. And you're going to understand this, what I recommend you and what will be helpful for this step is watching makeup tutorials, for example, when girls are doing contouring. It's um, going to help you to understand the process and understand you how you're supposed to do contouring um, by doing dodging and burning. And how does it look like? That's the dodge, so the areas that I brighten up, as you can see, this is pretty much inside. Um, what I did here by accident, it looks, I did some of the local dodge and burn also on this layer, but um, well, it happened, it's not really a problem, but uh, that's the uh, dodge, global dodge that I did over here. As you can see, 
I brighten up the areas where the lines goes. I brighten up the areas between eyebrows and the eyes as well. And about the burn, it's a bit easier. You go into around the face. Um, and what it does, you can see the face after this step looks a bit smaller and it actually really nicely improved the 3D perspective. And so that is global Dutch and burn and it's here, yellow. And yellow represents global Dutch. And I have color dark, I used color dark. It doesn't look so nice actually. It gives me these shifts, but yeah. Anyway, and this is global there. So till that moment, everything looks really pretty on this image, and this black color destroy a bit this beautiful art. But oh, um, well, anyway, we could use any other color. Maybe it looks nicer. But shifts also appearing. Yeah, I could I could show you maybe dark blue color could represent this. Dark red color? No, it, um, it looks a bit rough. Maybe we go with this color. It's not so bad. Okay, so that's global burn. Uh, maybe black color would be more representative, but it looks maybe nicer that way. Um, so yeah, the, we are at this point. Let me turn this off once again. And few other steps. The same for Dajin, I did um, brighten up the eyes just a little bit. This is not a really huge change, so now just brightening. Everything is done by curves, as you can see. So it's not really complicated. The same steps with her. This is a bit different thing because I'm not actually uh, knocking down the saturation, but in this case, I'm trying to improve the saturation also. Once again, I used curves for it um, to brighten up some hair, to darken them up and bring up some of the saturation. So the hair have really nice um, flow, I could say. They have really nice, this kind of blast. And here are the eyes. This creamy color, it's a bit maybe too strong. Let me knock it down. This is the areas where I brighten up the hair. And the bluish color is the area where I darken up hair a little bit. And that's how it looks full Dutch and burn process for it. Now I'm going to bring the black actually. It's the color I really like or bluish, okay. So that's how full process dodging and burn, dodge and burn process looks like. Um, that's my work, how I do this. And I believe you have really clear view for now how it is done. And at the end, what I did, of course, is some color correction and contrast. Contrast, I was using actually channels. Let's have a look. And also I darken up the background on the face, it's basically, it's barely to see, but I bring up just a little bit of the light on the face. Um, maybe you could see on this blue channel. Yeah, as you can see, just a little bit brighten up the face a bit more for more contrasts. And of course, at the end, uh, some of the color corrections where I was using selective color, um, that was for the lips, I think or yeah, I think a little bit on the lips and by curves, mostly, as you can see, I was uh, working with the background here to make this even more bluish and also still a bit more contrast at the end. So that's the final. And once again, how, how the image looks like by, that's the image we started with. That was after raw conversion, and that's the image we ended up with. I hope this video was helpful for you. I just wanted to tell you all of the steps that I do in my retouching. And yeah, I will not be hiding that I recommend you the course, because this is just talk about 
what did I do, a little bit on how I do this, but if you want to have the view and know how to do the professional Dutch and burn retouching, how to do professional retouching, check the description for a really huge discount for my course. I believe you will not be disappointed when you get my course, we can open discussion. Um, you can ask questions for the specific lessons and the subject of professional retouching will be really uh, well explained. I explain you different uh, methods for doing Dutch and Burn retouching. So yeah, that's it. Um, thank you for watching and I hope to talk to you very soon once again in my new video. Thank you.